Hello everyone, in a few seconds I'll start presenting our work, a study on tooth segmentation and numbering using end-to-end deep -end neural networks. But firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Bernardo, I'm a PhD student in computer science at UFBA and I would like to make it clear that you do not have to hesitate to contact me at this email right here if you have any questions about our work or contact me on social networks. I would also like to thank the other authors of this work and introduce them to you. This is Laís Pinheiro, she's a master student from UFPA's Mechatronic program. This is Matheus Piton, who is a professor of orthodontics at USB. And this is Luciano Oliveira, he's a computer science professor at UFPA and also my PhD advisor. Starting the presentation per se, this is how I structured it. I'll briefly introduce the subject of dental x-ray images. Then I'll quickly present the main related works. Next, I'll explain how we construct the benchmark, which was the way we chose to conduct this study. Then I'll talk about the materials, mainly the data set. Later, I'll talk about the methods we applied, which encompass the training and evaluation protocols. After that, I'll show the quantitative and qualitative results of our experiments. And finally, I'll show you the conclusions we came up with. Let's start with a quick introduction to the dental x-ray subject. We all know that x-ray images are a valuable resource for dentists. These professionals use x-rays to diagnose patients' conditions and plan treatments. However, these images are not easy to interpret and a professional may need years of experience until he or she can write reliable reports. As a consequence, many studies aim to develop tools to aid professionals in this challenging task. In dentistry, we find studies that propose tools for detect and classify tooth, segment tooth, detect caries, and diagnose osteoporosis. In a prior work from our lab, Silva et al. showed that most works before 2018 used handcrafted feature extractors. However, they also showed that deep learning solutions outperformed by far the traditional techniques in the tooth segmentation task as shown in these images. This is rather relevant because tooth segmentation is usually a pre-processing step in many of the proposed tools. Silva et al. also show that these works usually perform the experiments on intraoral dental x-rays images, probably due to their less changing in nature. This figure right here shows samples of the three most common types of dental x-rays, panoramic, bite-wing, and periopical. The bite-wing and periopical images are intraoral x-rays and are easier to interpret because they focus on few structures. So, within this scenario, where deep learning techniques in panoramic dental x-ray images were neglected, we decided to focus our study on end-to-end -end deep learning solutions for the segmentation and numbering task. But, before I go into the related work, one more detail. Let me explain what tooth numbering is. Each tooth has a long name, which dentists don't use too much. They usually refer to teeth by a two-digit number, in which the first digit specifies the quadrant, and the second digit identifies the tooth type. So, you can think of numbering as tooth classification. Our work aims to segment and number each tooth instance in panoramic dental x-rays to perform automatic analysis and form filling. Now I'll show some works that apply deep learning methods on panoramic dental x-ray images according to the task. Firstly, let's see the works that address semantic segmentation. Silva et al. in 2018 used mask RCNA to segment teeth considering the dental arcs as a single instance, as shown in the image on the left. Koch et al. used the UNET architecture to perform the experiments. Both works surpass the performance of traditional methods. However, semantic segmentation does not suffice as a pre-processing step for most types of automatic analysis. 
In a previous study from our lab, Shada et al. trained the mask RCNA to detect and segment teeth, considering each tooth as a single instance. To do this, the authors modified binary mask annotations, as shown in the figures. The left figure displays our original annotation, and the right one shows the modified version. We also adopted this procedure, as I'll explain later. This resulted in a considerably better performance. We find two works on the detection and numbering task. The first one, from To Solve et al., uses two neural networks, a faster RCNN for detection and a VGG16 for numbering. Unfortunately, this doesn't allow end-to-end -end training. The other work on detection and numbering is the one from Chang et al. The authors propose a new network architecture that performs a regression of 32 points, automatically numbering each permanent tooth. Later, these points are refined, and the bounding box are determined. However, the solution doesn't generate masks for each instance. Therefore, our work is the first to detect, number, and segment teeth in panoramic dental X-ray images. Now, let's talk about how we construct the benchmark of this study. The first step of the benchmark construction was the selection of the neural network architectures. We select four architectures that reach the state-of-the-art performance in the instance segmentation task on the COCO dataset. All these architectures belong to the two-stage detectors family. In the following slides, I'll briefly comment on each architecture and on their novelties. The first neural network architecture I'll talk about is the mask RCNA, which surpassed the COCO 2016 challenge win architecture performance on the instant segmentation task. It was the first architecture to extend the faster RCNN by adding a mask prediction branch. It also incorporated the feature parameter network and introduced the royal line technique, which is a quantization free pooling technique. The second architecture is the path aggregation network or PANET which was the COCO 2017 challenge winner architecture on the instant segmentation task. This network introduced three novelties. The first one was the addition of a bottom-up path to the backbone. The second one was the introduction of the adaptive feature pooling technique. And the third one was the use of tiny fully connected layers in the mask prediction branch. The third architecture is the Hybrid Test Cascade, or HTC, which won the COCO 2018 challenge on the instant segmentation task. This work's main novelty was the modification of the end branches, which were interwoven for prediction. Finally, the fourth architecture is the Split Attention Network, also known as ResNest, which is the current state of the art in the instant segmentation task on the COCO dataset. This architecture proposed a new backbone by stacking ResNet-like blocks with attention mechanisms. Its performance is also boosted through predictions in a cascade manner. Now let's talk about the materials, which is the used dataset. The used images are a subset of the Ufbawesk dental image dataset that our lab made public. These images have a high variability and were grouped into 10 different categories. We selected 543 images for instant segmentation and 778 images for semantic segmentation. We excluded images from categories 5 and 6 because they mainly included mouths with deciduous teeth and implants. We had to modify the available annotations for our experiments. Thus, we altered 267 binary mask annotations following the procedure by Jada et al. This amount, together with the 276 already modified by Jada et al., resulted in the 543 number already mentioned. The procedure consists of manually separating the binary masks resulting in tooth instance, as shown in the figures. We also added the number information by coloring each instance. The data used in our experiment is being publicly released under the name DNS Panoramic Images. 
The instructions to request the data set is on our lab GitHub page. After having discussed the materials we used, we can now focus on our work methods. All neural networks implementations came from public GitHub repositories, as listed here on the right, with codes usually provided by the original authors. These implementations came with different hyperparameters, which needed to be homogenized. For that, we established the training and evaluation protocols that I'll talk about in the following slides. The training protocol specified that the training procedure would be conducted with no time concerns. Therefore, each neural network was trained for 100 epochs when they all show clear overfitting signs. All neural networks benefited from transfer learning. The backbones were fixed to be the BrassNest and ResNet in their 50 layers version, training on the COGO dataset. Also, to conduct a robust competitive analysis, we split the dataset into five different folds. One of these folds was fixed as the test dataset, and the others took turns as the validation dataset, as shown here in the figure. This resulted in 16 neural networks that were selected according to their validation loss. We conducted two quantitative evaluations, an instance-aware evaluation for both numbering and segmentation, and a semantic segmentation evaluation in a pixelized fashion following Jada et al. This last evaluation can be considered supplementary. The instance-aware evaluation metrics were average precision 50, average precision 75, and mean average precision, being the mean average precision the primary metric. In the semantic segmentation evaluation, the metrics were accuracy, specificity, precision, recall, and F1 score, being the latter the reference metric. Some details were here omitted for brevity, but they can be found in the paper. After following all the training and evaluation protocols, we finally had the results, which I'll show now. Let's first check the quantitative results that are summarized in the following tables. As can be seen, the PNET had the best performance in all evaluation metrics on the test dataset. On the supplementary evaluation, PNET also won in all metrics except for the recall by small margin. Comparing these extra results with the ones from Jada et al., we noticed that all architectures from our benchmark outperformed the Mascar CNS solution by Jada et al. in the F1 score and in the accuracy. However, we do consider that this isn't a perfectly symmetric comparison. Let me show you some qualitative results so you can have a better sense of the architecture's performance. Firstly, let's see the best mean average precision result of the PANET. Pretty good, huh? Now let's see the worst result. It is also quite impressive. The bad mean average precision in this case is a consequence of a crude annotation. Let's compare all the best results side by side. One more time. All results are very satisfactory. And now let's compare all the worst results. One more time. Even the worst results are quite good, with only a few missing instances. Based on these results, I'll list the conclusions we came up with. We concluded that detecting, numbering, and segmenting teeth on panoramic dental X-ray images is entirely feasible by using end-to-end -end deep neural networks. The choice of the neural network architecture, however, has a significant impact on the overall performance. And the PNET had the best performance in our experiments. With all that said, I finished my presentation and now I'm open to questions.